Saints, we just bless the Lord as all of you come in. We thank the Lord um, for all of you being in prayer with us today. First Lady Jen, we thank the Lord for you, ma'am. Sister Karen, Sister Doreen Mosier, we just bless the Lord for you as you all come in. Please share the broadcast and uh, let's hit the reaction buttons as we go through the broadcast, except for when we're praying, uh, we'll be in prayer. And um, But outside of prayer, let's hit the reaction buttons at the bottom of the screen so the message can disseminate Apostle Annette will be with us shortly to address us. And we'll begin shortly. Just want to bless the Lord for all of you coming in at present time. Please share the broadcast again, if you can, so that we can all come into uh, unity and prayer today. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's another day journey, and I am so glad. How about you, Apostle? I'm Woo! so glad. I, I'm I'm right with you, Apostle. I'm so glad. I remember the old saints used to sing that all the time. Yes. Another day's journey, another it's day's journey. Another day's journey, and I'm so glad. It's another day's journey, and I'm so glad. It wasn't easy on yesterday. It's another day's journey, and I'm so glad. The world came to me no harm. It's another day with Jesus, and I'm so glad. It's another day with Jesus, and I'm so glad. It's another day with Jesus, and I'm so glad, you know, the world can do me no harm. It's another day's journey, my, 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 shatai, and I'm so glad, I feel my help coming on. It's another day's journey, and I'm so glad. It's another day, and I'm so glad. You know the world can do me no harm. Bishop, they used to say, mm, no harm, mama shaka shoto yande. No harm. No harm. No harm. No harm. You know the world can do me no harm. Yondo shiko sheta yenda. now. The world can't do us no harm. I feel my help. I'm telling, I'm telling you, it's a lot of you sing them all. They used to call them the old spirituals, right? Old spirituals. They used to call them the old, old spirituals. spirituals. Yes, yes, I'm telling you, we definitely need to get together for a, a, a unification, a unified prayer revival, a unified revival, because the revival is for the saints of God. So that we could come together so that our spirit can be revived. Amen. And so that we can also be built up, restored, renewed, refilled, re 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 reanointed. Because some people, they done lost their savior. They done lost their sultry. They done lost their flavor. They done lost what it takes. And a day they spiritual man need a revival. Amen. I'm, I'm just one of the ones that definitely need a revival in my spirit. I definitely miss, miss the in-house worship. I definitely miss the in-house fellowship. And online is good. It gives me a chance to move around at my own leisure. But it's it's truly something is missing with the divine connection. Amen. Of the Holy Ghost. Up. Oh. The fire, the power in the Holy Ghost. It's something missing. It's something happened when we get together because the Bible teaches us that iron sharpens is iron. So truly, I am um, Apostle Moses. Um, you know, people that have learned my first name. Thank you, Pastor Sheba. You know, they, they just sort of, sort of like clicked. Sort of like clicked on folks, and they making me make making me like that name. But my I'm Apostle Annette Moses. I'm from Schenectady, New York. 
I am the pastor and the founder of Second Chance Ministries, and that's where we are located, amen. And truly, it's a privilege and an honor to be before God's people. It's most of all, I received the grace of the Lord to be the host of the 90 Day Prayer Challenge. Um, and we're coming to a close, and I'm thanking and praising God for what he has done for us, each and every last one of you. You, you, and you, I'm just so ecstatic. I'm at awe. I'm, 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 I literally walk around, um, in a daze. Oh my God. I literally walk around in a daze. Oh, Apostle, about all the countless many blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon his people within oh, this so night. Funny. Hey, it is, uh, it's absolutely amazing what, what really it taught me was that God is sitting here waiting to bless her. It taught me that God is sitting Hello. there waiting to hear from you. It taught me that God is sitting there waiting for you to cry out one of them righteous cry. He said he hear the righteous cry. God is sitting there waiting to hear from us in, in a unison and in collaboration. And I'm so I'm at awe because I've got a chance to meet so many new people um, out on Facebook. I've been off for two years and just came back. So I had an opportunity to um, collaborate and to connect with so many uh new souls, so many uh, rejuvenated souls, not those rewashed souls. And I love it that the Holy Spirit has allowed them to connect with me so that they will be able to go to their next level in prayer, their next level in faith, their next level in fellowship, you know, their le next level of oneness and understanding what God came and what he sent his son for and how he died and knowing that he is such a merciful, true, merciful God. I'm just so grateful that, you know, I was able to be the, the, the one that stood in the middle in the gap. And now it's like, like pass, I feel like it's like passing the baton. I am definitely a midwife in the body of Christ. And I love the job that I do in the spiritual realm of ushering and, and, and birthing new babies in the Lord. And I'm pretty, I'm just excited about all God is doing and the, and the um, testimonies were still coming in even as of today. So I want to thank you, 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 and you for participating. I want to thank you for, you know, taking out the two minutes, the five minutes, the 10 minutes, your lunch hour, whichever time it took for you to even pop in and say, Apostle Moses, I'm praying with you. I'm standing with you. I'm here in the gap. And I want to take the time out to say thank you for that. And therefore, we have invited this awesome man of God to come and usher us out in the prayer revival. And um, thank you for your humility and your, you know, you, your strength and your stance in the Lord and your boldness, most of all. I'm really thanking God for, you know, the kingdom connection that's coming forward out of the kingdom connection, you know, and each and every last one. I'm going to read the scripture and then I'm going to um, turn this portion of our service over to our revivalist, none other than our Bishop Apostle Guy A. Cox. I want to thank the fellowship for participating for fun, and even collaborating in the spirit as well as in the natural. Your love will not go unnoticed. I pray that it will come back to you 1,000 fold according to Deuteronomy 1 and 11. I believe the word and everything that it says. If you believe it, you can receive it. If you doubt, you're going to do it out. I just got news for you. I'm going to take up to the chase and let you know how this thing works. So we're going to come from Titus chapter 3 and it says he saves us not because of our works, but it's our works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing and the regeneration and the renewing of his Holy Spirit. May God continue to add a blessing to the reader, mm -hmm. to the hearer, and most of all, to the doer of his word. And I thank you for, uh, once again for allowing me to be the the 90 day challenge at this time. Without any further ado, I'm going to turn you over to this awesome powerful gift of the Holy Spirit in the form of Bishop Apostle Guy A. Cox. Amen, Apostle Annette. We just thank the Lord for you, man, and your, your, and your obedience to, to the Holy Ghost in this 90-day prayer challenge. This is a major undertaking, and we thank the Lord that uh, for, powerfully for your obedience, and um, there are so many of us that, you know, we just 
we just, you know, we, there's some things we need to understand. There's more dimensions in faith and in the Lord that we can dive deeper into. And every year, saints, we want to, you know, come before the Holy Ghost daily and ask him to take us in deeper. And so we just thank the Lord. We just thank the Lord for, for you, Apostle uh, Lynette, and just, um, and just thinking of not robbery to really just obey the Holy Ghost. So many today are just backsliding and they're turning away from the Holy Ghost. It's his administration. They're just turning away and, uh, you know, going about worldly pursuits and covetousness. But we thank the Lord and we do have to work and we do have to do uh, what we have to do. At the same time, our greatest vocation, I always tell people my job is my advocation, uh, but serving the Lord is my vocation because the word of the Lord says we're to walk worthy according to the uh, vocation of wherewith we have been called. And Sister Karen, we thank the Lord for you, man. Don't worry about that. Um, it doesn't matter what people call me. I know who I am. I'm a child of the King. And that's the most important thing. We thank the Lord for your husband. And um, he's from San Antonio. That's awesome. We have a son down in San Antonio. And um, we go there often and uh, we're right here in Dallas. So we thank the Lord um, for just every one of you. Please continue to share. Please continue to hit the reaction buttons at the bottom of the screen so the message can disseminate. Uh, this is our uh, 89th day in this 90 day uh, prayer challenge. Tomorrow is the final day and the Holy Ghost is going to do what only he can do. I am decreasing and have decreased that he might increase in me. And listen, I'm just in the I'm just just in the passenger seat. He's driving. Apostle Annette and I were in the passenger seat, and he's going to have his way in here. I'm excited to be with you, Apostle Annette. I'm excited to be with all of you, uh, saints and leaders of the Most High globally. We thank the Lord for you. Listen, we're going to go in Isaiah, the uh, 59 chapter. I'm just going to read a couple of verses to us. We'll start right at the 12th verse, Isaiah, the 59th chapter, the 12th through the 16th verse. And uh, it's so awesome when you have uh, uh, men and women of God who are in the power of the Holy Ghost together, because literally what the Holy Ghost is going to say to us, uh, Apostle Moses, she already alluded to actually the two uh, legs of the concern of a Holy Ghost. She actually alluded to both of them without even knowing it. And so that's why I love when we come together, because it truly is iron and sharpened iron, because the Holy Ghost is is the anvil and the, or I should say, he is the sharpening stone upon which we're being sharpened. And so we just thank the Lord. And I'm excited to be here with you all. Please continue to share. I'm giving a little time for more of you to share and others to come in. And um, we just thank the Lord um, for each and every one of you. Our first lady here, Lady Jen is here. Babe, I love you. I thank the Lord for her being here. She's at work, but she's still present. Many of you are at work. We thank the Lord for your diligence and and for you being with us on today. And we bless the Lord. Listen, Isaiah, the 59th chapter, the 12th through the end. I'm go, we're going to read forensically here. And, and please hear what the Holy Ghost is saying to us, because this is magnanimous in our hour and in our time. You know, the word of the Lord is to every generation, Apostle Lynette. But I think what we're going to have to understand is that there are times in our generation where there are things that are not new, but they are fresh to our generation. There are some things that my father lived to experience that I didn't because I wasn't alive at that time. And now we're both alive together and we're seeing some things together. And I'm just using him as an example. We're seeing some things together, but our chronological age doesn't make a difference in how the Lord uses us per se, but it does make a difference in what we have seen and what we have experienced. And this is why I've always given honor to the elders uh, because of their experience in walking with the Lord, not just their revelation, their wisdom, their knowledge, and their understanding, but their experience. They know how to handle some things that the rest of us seem to want to panic about you see and so that's why they're so critical and i tell young preachers all the time if you don't see me panicking i tell my house you don't see me panicking don't you panic nothing's wrong i don't care how bad it looks i don't care how much hell breaks loose listen if if you don't see me pat it's because i've walked with the lord over three decades now and continuing and every year i experience more and more and listen if you get a good 10 years down the road with the holy ghost you'll experience so much that you almost be unshakable at that point but when 
when you get beyond that 10 year point, certainly by the time. And now we're not talking about if you do what I call break in the chain. If you're in and out, you got one foot in the world, one foot in the kit. We're not talking about that. Matter of fact, there's no such thing as that. You're either in or you're out. And I don't, I'm not jumping on anybody. I know we say that for understanding, but the reality of it is there is no such thing. You're either in the kingdom, born again by the Holy Ghost, or you're outside of it, you know? And so I honored the elders and I always have because they have experienced things with the Holy Ghost, not just reading scriptures, not just uh, receiving revelation from the Holy Ghost, but actually and tactically walking it out and living it in real time. Because listen, saints, if the scriptures are not walked out and lived out, and the Holy Ghost talked to us about this yesterday, then it's basically useless in our life and Satan can keep running all over us. And so we need to understand this. Bishop V, Pastor Sheba, we just thank the Lord for both of you uh, out there in uh, upstate and um, so many of you from the upstate area, other areas around the country, and our other leaders will be coming in internationally here shortly, I'm sure, because, uh, and so uh, we just thank the Lord um, for all of you. This is our 89th day again of a 90-day prayer challenge. I'm so excited to be on the, uh, the tail end of this, the closing end of this, because I was explaining to Apostle in that I am a finisher. I'm a closer. It is the, it is the strongest suit that I have is to not just start things because apostles, that's what we do. We build things. We start things. We put things in place. We're administrators. We know how to take vision in the realm of the spirit and bring it into real time. But you also have have to know how to close the show. You have to know how to close. And I say that metaphorically speaking, we have to know how to close the mission of the Lord, not just start it. And so Apostle Annette and I, listen, we're closing out here and we're finishing strong in the Holy Ghost. Isaiah, the 59th chapter, I'm going to ask everybody to fasten your spiritual seatbelt. You already know how we do. We're going to the mountaintop. It's going to get hot and heavy in here. It's going to be nuclear. Isaiah, the 59th chapter, many are saying, Apostles, why? why? You know, it seems like nobody in the church wants to pray. Pray. Maybe nobody in your church, but we love praying over here. And some time ago, I, I said to Pastor Sheba, tell Apostle Annette, if she needs somebody on there with her praying, I will pray every day with her if necessary, because I love to pray. And far as I'm concerned, leaders of the Most High God, saints all around the world, there is no more important work than we can engage in, that we that we can engage in than communing with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, Apostle, there's no greater work than to commune with the Holy Ghost, i.e. prayer, because many people think prayer is, is, as we alluded to yesterday, and I like to bring this before us all the time, it's not just bringing our desires and our wants and our supplications to the Lord. You know, when you get deep in prayer and you get mature in prayer, when you matriculate before the Holy Ghost and you're mature, you start to put away more your desires, and I call it your shopping list, and all of us have one, you start to put that away way uh, a whole lot more as you mature and you start to ask the Lord, what is it that you desire today from me, out of me? What do you desire to do in me? What do you want to do with me? Where do you want to send me? What do you want me to say, not say, do not do? It starts to become all about him and nothing about us. Why? Because I already trust that if he had enough omni omniscience to make me and I can't number the hairs on my head as the Lord Jesus says and I can't add one cubic to my stature then certainly if a God who I serve my father in heaven your father in heaven is able to make each and every one of us and knew us before we came through the portal of our mother's womb then certainly he knows what I need and he will provide it and Apostle Annette, you and I know, listen, ma'am, you and I know all the years we've been on this planet, not only has the Lord kept us, he's kept us perfectly. Yes. Hello, yes. somebody, yes. even when the world oh, came against God. us, even when we, at our birth, things were going wrong, even when people tried to take us out of here and talked about us and did all this other stuff, and uh, we've all been guilty of some kind of evil, and even our own sins, the scripture says, the Lord did not give us as we deserve. So how can you not trust an eternal heavenly father who's so loving that he can even keep us from our own destruction when we were trying to destroy our own selves through our ignorance and he kept us anyway. How can you not trust him? So I have learned, Apostle, like you have learned, I'm sure... As we go along, we start to put those needs and desires and just leave them for the Lord. He knows them. I tell the Lord all the time, Apostle, I said, I'll take care of your business, Lord, because I know you'll take care of mine. And I don't even come to him about it. I know he's got it. 
I'm not saying that I don't ever bring something that's on my behalf before him, but I'm telling you, it's about 1% of the time now as I've grown, because I know that he handles it even when I don't ask. He already knows. He already knows. And so I've learned to come and say, Father, you know I have business. You take care of my business, and I am for sure going to take care of your business. And I have grown to that place, saying, So I want to encourage somebody today. Let's continue to grow. Let's continue to not only grow, but growing is so that we grow up, as the scripture says, to the full stature and measure of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah, the 59th chapter in the 12th verse, please fasten another spiritual seatbelt. It's going to get hot and heavy in here. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. Okay, this is critical. And as for our iniquities, we know them. Okay, now the Holy Ghost is talking mainly to the international community. So why do we need to pray, prayer warriors? Why is it so critical that we pray? Because listen, just because we're not walking in transgressions and sins doesn't mean everybody else in the world is not. And there are 7.2 billion people on the planet. We have to understand that's a whole lot of people that need freedom. And the word of the Lord says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? liberty. There's freedom. There are a whole lot of bound people today. We got a whole lot of spiritual captives. I love what Isaiah 61 says. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Upon who? In our generation, in every generation since Jesus left, the king left, it is the body of Christ. The spirit of the Lord is upon us to preach good tidings unto the meek. Now we can preach them to the rebellious, stubborn, the hard-hearted, and the hard-headed, but they're not necessarily going to receive it. So wrath is going to have to come in their life and destroy and remove everything that's against the love of the Lord so that their hearts can soften up and they can receive these good tidings that we're preaching. But the scripture goes on to say, he has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted. There are a whole lot of brokenhearted today to, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. We got spiritual captives. We got them that Satan has bound. We jump to the New Testament and the apostle Paul is saying that we must be patient and apt to teach all men per adventure that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the enemy. There are so many. And listen, the scripture goes on to say the end of that verse is who are taking and captive by him at his will. So everybody walk around talking about, I'm doing my own thing, I'm doing my own truth. No, you're not. The scripture says you have been taken captive by the devil at his will. You're doing his will and you're ignorant and don't even realize you're doing it. And that's why he has free access to your life. So intercessors, prayer warriors, hear the Holy Ghost carefully. Why is it important for us to pray? First of all, we got to get out of a selfish spirit. And that's one reason the Holy Ghost is talking to us about setting what we need aside because he already knows and he'll take care of it. Pastor John, out of out of uh, Kenya, Africa, we thank the Lord for you, sir, coming in, Pastor John. Sister Equinum, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. One day you're going to have to pronounce your name for me so I can stop thinking I'm getting it wrong. But Sister Equidon, we thank the Lord for you. Pastor John McCoy there in Kenya, Africa, we thank the Lord for you, sir. All of our international leaders are coming in. We bless the Lord for all of you in the contiguous uh, United States and all of our global leaders. We bless the Lord for you. Listen, so intercessors, prayer warriors, please understand, just because we're delivered, just because we have it together, just because the Holy Ghost is working in us, uh, uh, we have job security because the majority of people on this planet, as we can see in all our quasi and pseudo religion, guess what? They are not where we are. They are not baptized in the Holy Ghost. They are not walking in freedom. There is nowhere the spirit of the Lord is. There's liberty for them. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. So there is no liberty for them. So we always have, we always have job security. Now, as we read Isaiah, the 59 chapter apostle, listen, listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying, because this is why we can't focus on who's not praying. We have to focus on the fact that we're praying and the Holy Ghost will answer us. And let me tell you something. He will send angels to assist you. I am a living witness that when you begin to pray and you begin to take care of the father's business, he will send angels as ministers of fire, a flaming fire to assist us in the work that we're doing down here to remove principalities and powers in areas like he's done here in Dallas, Texas. And we've been prophesying for quite some time the work that he's going to do. And he's done everything that he showed us perfectly. He's even flooding this place with real and true prophets. Now, when I first came here uh, four years ago, it seems like it was void of them. You couldn't find a prophetic voice anywhere who was a true prophetic voice. And now 
they're showing up and they're showing up by the cartloads. And this is what the why the Lord will send apostles to different territories and regions to open up the way and to drive the enemy out of there. And this is what makes the fivefold ministry so important is because if we understand what the Holy Ghost has created us to do, then we will uh, we will get to work and we will go in there and we will take territories and regions back from Satan's forces, all right? So now, this is why we must pray, intercessors, prayer warriors. This is why, and let me tell you something. I know we like to take prayer warrior and we like to take intercessor and I love it, but let me explain something. All the saints in the body of Christ are supposed to be prayer warriors and supposed to be intercessors. Hello, somebody in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. All of us are supposed to be praying. All of us are supposed to be interceding. And I'm going to tell you why you say, no, Bishop, you say, no, apostle, this is a specialized area. Uh, there is a specific gift in that area, but trust me, it is not necessarily a specialized area. We are all supposed to be pray, prayer warriors and praying we are all supposed to be interceding and i'm going to tell you why that's right um sister Tal selena apostles and prophets are usually paired together and there's a reason for that <clears throat> because apostles and prophets lay the foundation and they also build the buildings on top that foundation and this is what makes the word of the lord true when it says that the church is built upon the holy foundation of the whole uh, the, uh it's built upon the foundation of the holy apostles and prophets come on in the firepower of the holy ghost and so we are usually paired together and i can tell you one thousand percent sure i have mighty prophets standing with me of different generations of different ages and the Holy Ghost doesn't miss in them and I'm going to tell you us working together there are so many things that even many of you are looking at right now and I'm telling you right now it's because the apostles and, and the prophets that are standing with me we are working together and that's why you're seeing what you're seeing and I'm going to tell you in the firepower of the Holy Ghost you all haven't seen nothing yet so let's continue to take this ride. Bishop V, we thank the Lord for you coming in, sir, and we bless the Lord for you, Sister Selena. Listen, and so listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying. Verse 13, in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing from our God, United States of America, we're good for this, and uh, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the uh, from the heart, words of falsehood. That's critical. Please put to, put a mental pin on that. And judgment is turned away backward. Whose judgment? The Lord's judgment. Because that's who's speaking through the great prophet here. And justice standeth afar off. Look at our world right now. How much justice is standing far? How much illegal activity? And it's not new. It's been going on. It's just heightening as we're headed towards the seven-year period of the tribulation that the Lord spoke about. Body of Christ, don't get nervous because we're not going to be here to see it. But let me explain something. The Holy Ghost did say to me, because I asked him, I said, Holy Ghost, why are you having us preach out of the book of Revelation and preach about the tribulation period if we're not even going to be here? He said, that's the issue. Many think they're not going to be here, and I'm telling you they are, son. Hello, somebody in the Holy Ghost. There are many of us that think we're not going to be here when the rapture, uh, not going to be here when the Antichrist shows, but the way that we're living, and we're going to see it. This is why, prayer warriors and intercessors, it is so critical for us to come together and pray, because there are many right now that believe that when the body of Christ is translated out of here, they're going. But I can tell you right now, the Holy Ghost said, it's going to be a surprise on many when you're still here, and you lay your eyes on this Antichrist. And last night when we were in the prophetic roundtable, we went over Revelation in the 13th chapter and the, and the second verse. If you missed that prophetic roundtable, please get on all our pages. Grab Bishop V's page, Pastor uh, uh, Sheba's page. You grab their pages, you get on there. We shared it all over. It's all over. Get that lesson last night. Prophet Emmanuel on fire. Pastor Sheba was on fire. Bishop V was on fire. I'm with them. We're all in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. You want to get that because it is coupled with what we're talking about today. It's all a seamless stream. It's not, it, the Holy Ghost uses many vessels but it's one voice because it's him as one spirit speaking through his his children listen to the holy ghost carefully justice is standing far off for truth is fallen in the street what kind of truth your truth my truth no the divine truth of the lord's word is fallen in the street and for that reason the the lord says to the great prophet and equity cannot enter you know what equity is it's a just balance we have so many things that are out of balance. The finances, the economic structure of our country is out of balance. 
Hello, somebody in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. The structure of the church is out of balance. I'm talking about the structural church, the organized church. Much of it is out of balance now. Now we have the church completely out of balance, and I'm not talking about the body of Christ, the true church. We have an apostate church. We went over that last night, who is attempting to act like us, look like us, sound like us, fool people that they are us, but they're not the true ecclesia of the Lord. And we went over this in the scriptures last night. So let's hear what the Holy Ghost is saying carefully. When his truth is no longer being preached in the streets, Hello, sirs, ma'ams, brothers and sisters in the most high God. When his truth is not being preached in the streets, when we're not praying his truth behind closed doors, whether it be our churches, whether it be our homes, whether it be on our jobs, when we stop interceding, when we stop praying, guess what? The whole entire international community starts to fall in denigration and degradation. And I find it interesting that the Lord says through this same prophet to the nation of old Israel, he said, I made you a pleasant vine, but now you have become a degenerate plant. I don't even recognize you. The Lord is not even recognized. He recognizes the body of Christ. But there was a time when the body of Christ, was, the church was preeminent in the United States of America. And now it's like, because the preacher stopped preaching truth and truth fell in our streets. Hello, somebody in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Now nobody recognizes who the true church is. And this allowed for a counterfeit to come forward where they don't preach against sin, when they don't use words like hell and salvation and sin, and you need to repent and you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. We no longer hear this true fire and brimstone preaching anymore, which was the foundation of what the country was built upon. Don't tell me fire and brimstone preaching is not what this nation was built upon. You have to go get Jonathan Edwards, Pastor Jonathan Edwards out of the New England area. We're talking centuries ago, preached a message called sinners in the hands of an angry God. That is true fire and brimstone. And that sparked one of the greatest revivals known to humankind. And many of the revivals have been sparked when this kind of preaching was going on. And when I was growing up in the church, this was the standard. But by the time I got grown, we had some other preachers coming along thinking they were smarter than the Holy Ghost and changed the standard. Now look at what has happened to the nation. Don't and they used to, and let me tell you how they got many of you. They told you, oh, it don't take all of what the old preachers were saying. But look at where we are now. The old preachers and old mothers of the church and fathers of the church told you you had to cover up when you came in there. Now everybody's coming in the church half naked. Hello, somebody. They told you when you came in, you had to tarry on the altar. First Lady Jen uh, said, told us that last night in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. In our comments, she said, we need to go back to tarrying services. My father, Elder Charles Cox, we talk about that often. We need to go back. They told you to tarry on the altar. Those old mothers and fathers, those old bishops, those old apostles, listen to me. When you came in the church, they could look at you and they say, you were sinning this weekend. Go get on the altar. You're not singing in the worship team. Uh, you're not singing in the choir. You're not preaching this week because you got sin in you. They could see it and they tell you to go get on the altar and the young people, we weren't arguing with them and getting upset and leaving the church and talking about them, which is dangerous for our souls. We went and got on the altar until the Holy Ghost delivered us. Come on, somebody in the fire power of the Holy Ghost. Prayer and intercession is, prayer and intercession is about us getting to the point where the Holy Ghost can purge and purify us. And because when he can purge and purify us, then the word saints out of our mouths will be holy, will be pure, will be purified. We have so many preachers now standing up in the pulpits and their word is not purified. That's why we're here. That's why we got a preacher up here not too long ago talking about how she's going to whoop her sister's butt in the street. That's not holy. <clears throat> but how did we get there? We got there because there's no pur purging. There's no purifying. You just, oh, the Lord told me I was a prophet. Nobody else can, no, he didn't confirm it through anybody else. He didn't confirm it through any other channel. You just jumped up because you got a gift. You And many of you think you have a gift. You don't really have a gift. Many of you think you can preach. You really can't preach. Many of you, because you haven't stu studied to show yourself approved, 
And when you stand up before individuals like us who are seasoned, we know you don't have it. You're just too ignorant to know you don't have it. And you won't even humble yourself and go back to the altar so the Holy Ghost can give it to you. You just keep on going against and you don't know that you're rebelling and rebelling and you don't know that you're the one that in that day the Holy Ghost is going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you because if he can't harness you in holiness, he can't use you to preach holiness. If he cannot harness us in holiness, he cannot use us to preach holiness and that's why i know we have so many preachers who are not preaching holiness you're preaching your 25 steps to this and two steps of that and nine steps of this and nobody's getting saved nobody's getting delivered nobody's being purified and purged nobody's being made holy and then it comes out of your mouth and you're saying the lord is using you no sir no ma'am you're a liar the holy ghost is not using you because the holy ghost will not use anybody apostle that you know this who he can't harness. If he can't harness you in holiness, he can't use you for holiness. If he can't harness you in holiness, you won't live holiness. You won't preach holiness. You won't, you won't counsel holiness. Holiness will stand aloof from you because you're standing aloof from the one that can make you holy in holiness. And when I say this all the time in the Cox community, I find it interesting that the etymological root of the word holy and the word salvation is to be made whole is what we see in Isaiah 61. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. So you have to understand you are not holy and you are not saved until you're made whole. And the only one that can make you whole is the Lord Jesus Christ in the baptism and firepower of the Holy Ghost. So how are you going to be holy if you haven't come to the Holy One? I'm just asking. Don't answer the question for me. I already know the answer. I'm asking so the Holy Ghost can convict you because I walk in his holiness. I walk in the firepower of who he is, and I demonstrate it regularly as he desires to use me, and I just let him use me. As you see, an apostle Lynette lets him use her, and all of you on here, you let. we know how this goes, all right? So the 15th verse says, yea, truth faileth. Why is truth failing, America? I tell you why, because the preachers are failing to let the Holy One purge and purify their tongue so the word proceed now will be holy. We're coming up there next week, Apostle Ned, and I'm super fired up to get out in these parks. I'm telling you right now, I can't wait. I'm like a pit bull waiting to get out the gate. And I got some sharp teeth for the devil. And I'm telling you, I'm going to bite everything that's satanic and moving. I'm telling you right now, I can't wait to get up there. We are going out there and we're going to preach a word of holiness and truth. And we're going to preach it. I don't care who likes it. And I don't care if the police show up. And I don't care if the whole cities are turned upside down on their head. We're going to preach it till the Lord is glorified. So help me, God, if it costs me my life, we're going to do it now. Listen to what the Lord is saying. Yea, truth faileth. And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. America, you know this is true. And we might be praying next week for all we know. Because the word of the Lord says we are led to the slaughter like sheep every day. Like sheep, we are led to the slaughter. We are in a time now when you preach truth and holiness and righteousness, you become a prey. People want to talk about you. The, these cowards got social media, so you sit up there on social media. You want to talk. I bet you wouldn't say it in our faces, though. I bet you wouldn't come down there. Some of you are so chicken, and you sit up there, and you're sitting on social media, and we're not inciting a riot or any fights or anything. Don't get me wrong. But some of you, we got social media now, and as cowards, you will sit up there, criticize, talk, say all you're big and bad enough to say, no conviction of the Holy Ghost and you think you're going to get away with that we don't have to do nothing to you trust me when you take your last breath trust me you are going to pay for all that stuff that you're doing and the Lord is going to make sure of it because you may escape man here baby but you are not going to escape the king of kings and the Lord of lords in his judgment and I'm telling you right now we got cowards that sit up on social media criticize troll want to talk about holiness and righteousness we are suffering persecution every day because we're that's right apostle keyboard gangsters y'all are gangster on the keyboard and then when we come out there in real time you don't even show up we can't get you down to the prayer service we can't get you down to the parks to evangelize we certainly can't get you in the streets to evangelize because you're too scared to even show your face on social media i don't expect to see you out there in real time where we don't have security teams and you can actually get shot hello somebody where you have no security we're going out there we have no security we have the, the only security we have, let me say the greatest security we have, is the Holy Ghost. But understand, 
The Lord caused some of us to murder them. Hello, somebody. Um, maybe not necessarily anybody here, but he does call some of us in the body of Christ to murder them. So you have to know when you go out here, you have to be prepared to give your life for the king. And it is certain he has given his life for us. And I am prepared to give my life. I've been going out here for 30 years. First Lady Jen has been out with me many a times. We spent all last year in the park here in Dallas, Texas. No security team. Her and I stand at flat-footed, one uh, um, makeshift podium, one camera, one camera stand, and I'm out there preaching just like you hear me preaching now. And let me tell you something. There were people throwing stones. There was guy, a guy that came out. He shouting, called the police on us. Let me tell you something. Some of you think you're tough. Meet me at these parts when I get there next week. We're going to see how tough you are. Come out in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Because truth has fallen in the streets in the upstate area up there. You're staying scared behind the four walls of your church. But next week, baby, this six foot two high yellow prophet from Detroit, Michigan, is coming out in those streets up there. And I'm going to preach and let me tell you something in case you weren't aware. It's not the first time I preached in all those streets. I preached in Troy, Albany, and Schenectady many years ago, right up in those Martin Luther King projects in Troy, all through Troy, all through Schenectady, all through Albany. Dr. Guthrie and I took Central Park over and we went to that park and we preach holiness and righteousness. I have been all through those areas and I'm coming again in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. And I've grown. That was probably over 20 some years ago. And I have grown since then. And I'm bringing more firepower than we brought back then. And I'm telling you, we're going to be in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Don't punk out. Get out there. Some of you apostles up in that area, you said, how is our cities going to pot? And one of them, I told them it's because there's no more truth being preached in the streets. So the this true apostle is coming up there, coming out in those streets, and apostle in that will be with us, and there are many of others of you, and we're going out in the streets, and we're going to bring truth right into the streets. You want to talk about prayer? You want to talk about intercession? You can't just pray it. you got to demonstrate it. Hello, somebody. And we said last night, when you can't demonstrate the power of God, all you will do is display it. you got the, you got your cute little signs up. All the power of God's over at this building. All the power of God. you got your t-shirts on, but you can't demonstrate it. You can't demonstrate the power of God. If you can't demonstrate the power of God, take those t-shirts off, take that sign down off the building, get yourself on the altar until the Holy Ghost purifies and purges you, and you can begin to demonstrate the firepower of the Holy Ghost, and until then, shut your mouth, and the only thing we want to hear is you on the altar calling on the name of the Lord until his firepower shows up in you, and you get yourself out there with me and Apostle in that, and you start preaching, and you start reaching, and we can take all these souls, and we can take Troy, Schenectady, Albany, Dallas, Texas, us in any other area the Lord sends us to when we are willing to bring the holiness of his truth, his divine truth in the streets. The old saints used to sing a song that said his truth is marching on. I feel like heart wheeling up out of here, apostle. I'm telling you right now, in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, listen to me carefully. Yea, truth fell in verse 15. We're in Isaiah 59 chapter. And he that departed from evil makes himself a prey, and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Here's the key. And he saw that there was no man and wondered and wondered that there was no intercessor. Uh-oh. Oh, Apostle Annette. This is the Lord saying this. He is looking, searching, wondering. This is the Lord saying, I am in wondering. That word is translated, that word is translated dismay. I'm in dismay. Where's my man? Where's my woman? Where's my intercessor? Why is truth falling in my streets, America? Why is truth falling in my streets, Troy, Schenectady, Albany, Dallas, Texas? Why is truth falling in my streets? Where's my man? Where's my woman? You are apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, so-and-so, uh, uh, you know, honeycomb reacher, bleacher, and you got all these titles. Where is the man and the woman, the intercessor who can demonstrate the firepower of my presence and my spirit to my people right in the streets, regardless of the environment, regardless of the atmosphere, in the church, outside the church, in the marketplace? Where is my man? Where is my woman? You, so many of us, you talk a good game, but you can't demonstrate the firepower of the Holy Ghost, and we're done with you, apostate church. You are not our brothers and sisters, because you do not have the spirit of the Lord, and the Lord himself said, if you do not have my spirit, you are none of mine. Hello, somebody. 
So stop sitting up there talking about, oh, we're all the we're all the children of God. No, we are not. The only ones that are his children are the ones who are baptized in his spirit. That's his word. Get it in your spirit. You can't change it. I'm not going to change it. And you need to get it before it's before you take your last breath. And it's too late. The Lord is saying, where's my man? Where's my woman? Mm -hmm. You talk a good game, but why is truth falling in my streets? The Holy Ghost builds the litmus test. The Holy Ghost builds the test that measures each one of us. The Holy Ghost is the measuring stick for who's his and who's not. Not any of us. So where's this truth, men and women of God? Prayer warriors, intercessors. That's why it's so powerful that we're praying and we're interceding because the Lord is saying, until we pray, until we intercede, until we demonstrate his presence and his power, not just inside where it's safe, but outside where it's not, till we go in the streets and demonstrate. He didn't say in the temple here, and he could have said that because they had one. He said, why is truth falling in the streets? Where's my man? Where's my woman? Where's my prayer warrior? Where's my intercessor? Who's going to understand my truth? This is why the prophet Isaiah says in another chapter, he says, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Many of you say you're saying that the arm of the Lord, his power, that's a theological symbol for his power. His power has not been revealed to you because you won't let him harness you because when his power is revealed to you, it becomes like fire shut up in your bones. If you try to hold it, you got to let it out like you're hearing right now and you got to let it out. And so it, it, when it's revealed to you, you can demonstrate. Hello, somebody. That's why prayer is so critical. Because when we go in prayer, it's where the Holy Ghost can reveal his power to us. He can reveal his presence to us. Then he expects us to take his presence and his power, and he expects us to take it and go to where he sends us so that truth can come into the streets. Streets is a theological symbol for everywhere he will send us. Streets, marketplace, your house. The White House, the Out House, the State House, the Local House, the Church House. Hello, somebody. So why pray? So you can get a revelation of his power, and then he can touch you, purge you, purify us, and then we can demonstrate it. This is such a profound principle that Jabez, Jabez, the Spirit of the Lord brought Jabez to me last night. Seemingly, this man prays a prayer, and it's like it comes out of the middle of nowhere, but it didn't. The point of Jabez is this. Jabez, when he was born, his mother born him in great sorrow. So she named him Jabez. His name means sorrow. Jabez didn't stay stuck on that fact. It was a fact. His mother birthed him in sorrow, and his name meant sorrow. But he decided in prayer to commune with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He decided to believe his truth and not the fact that was standing before him. It was a fact his name meant sorrow because he was born in sorrow. He decided not to build his life upon that fact, but the divine truth that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, who he had seen, bless many others. He said, would you bless me? And he asked him for a four-point blessing, and the scripture says the Lord gave it to him. You want another reason to pray? Yes, there's a lot of facts about your life. You've been traumatized, sir. You've been traumatized, man. You've been scandalized. You've been lied on. You've been talked about. That's a fact, but it's not divine truth. The Holy Ghost has the divine truth for your life, and if you'll let him harness you, he will turn you into a prayer warrior, turn you into an intercessor, turn you into a vessel of honor that can demonstrate his presence and his power right out in these streets. Come out in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Yes, there's a lot of facts. Let's stop whining about the facts. We've rehearsed them a million times. We know them, the Holy Ghost knows them, but here's where we make the change, people of God. We got to make the change by not staying stuck on the facts and begin to search divine truth at the altar. That is the purpose of prayer, is, is, is discerning divine truth at the altar before the Holy Ghost. Just because your life started in sorrow doesn't mean it has to end. That's what makes the word of the Lord true when it says, He that goes forth bearing precious seed, weeping bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again. Hello. And the scripture says, and I'm going to translate for understanding, doubtless come again with his reward in his bosom. Hello, somebody in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Just because we started in sorrow, sir, man, does not mean we have to end it. End it. I tell people all the time, I've even said this in my household, even to my own wife, the first lady. I said, you and I grew up and we had a lot of hell, but I have determined in my spirit from the time I left my daddy's house that I was no longer going to have hell in my life. Satan may attack, 
That's all right. But we got firepower for him. I'm not worried about it. But I'm talking about the kind we induce when we won't let the Holy Ghost deal with us. Hello, somebody. When we choose, many of you are just choosing to stay stuck in hurt and trauma. You don't have to stay there. Oh, I can't get out of it. I know, but the Holy Ghost can get us out of it. Hello, somebody in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Jabez chose to believe the divine truth of the Lord and not the fact of his life. And that's what the Holy Ghost wanted me to tell us on today. Many of you are suffering. Now, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And here's, what the, here's our assignment today, prayer warriors, intercessors. I want every one of you who knows somebody who's in trauma, and don't be ashamed if you're in trauma, you don't listen. Code it. I don't care. But get it in the chat. If you know somebody that's in trauma, you know somebody that's going through, type a one, two, three, four, type an icon in anything you want to type in there. The Holy Ghost knows who you're talking about. We're going to pray, and today the Lord is going to begin to do his magnanimous deliverance work in the lives of those that are caught in these cyclic, destructive measures of trauma and hurt and pain, and you're heartbroken, and you're vulnerable, and you have a whole, you know, and so the Holy Ghost said to me, son, if they will trust me, and they will type something in there, don't, if you don't feel comfortable with the name, don't type it in there, give me a one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, whatever it is, get some, there we go, some praying hands, emojis, hearts, whatever it is, and get that person in your mind. If it's you, put that in, put something in there for you, but let's get something in here, and today we're going to focus on, on removing the facts of our life and getting in the divine truth of what the Holy Ghost has destined us to. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father. First of all, we thank you on today for the privilege and the honor to come boldly before your throne. Because King Jesus, when you died and your blood was offered up, your word says it was offered up once. And it opened up a new and a living way that we can approach our Heavenly Father. Thus bringing to pass your words when you said, I am the way, the living way, the truth and the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. Father, we thank you on today that we could come boldly before your throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in the time of need. Holy Ghost, you said if we'll trust you and we'll put before you who that person is, even if that person is us, who has been traumatized. That's a fact. You will put the facts before you and exchange the facts for the divine truth of your destiny for each and every one of us. Holy Ghost, you promise you would move by your presence and your power in each and every one of these lives who we name, who we have in our mind, who's been on our heart, who we already been praying for and interceding. You said you would begin to work. And Lord, we already know that you're working on our behalf. Lady Jen and I, we have so many on our international prayer list and we're watching you just, just do uh, miracles by, by bundles and bundles, by leaps and bounds. You are changing and rearranging people's lives. We're seeing you do some of the most magnanimous things we've ever seen in our walk with you, Holy Ghost. And we know... And the Apostle Annette has said the same thing, Holy Ghost, that the testimonies are pouring in. She told us they're coming in. They'll continue to come in. And tomorrow when we come on, we know that even more testimonies will come in by then. And they'll continue many months, many years afterwards. There'll be people coming back 20 years from now saying, there'll be people coming 20 years from now saying, you remember when you did that 90-day prayer challenge? Apostle, that's where I got healed. That's where I got delivered. That's where I got saved. That's why, Holy Ghost, I know you're having a soul to fruit right now. You will deliver us from the facts. You promised, and we're not trusting in the arm of flesh here. We are. Your power has been revealed to us. Your word has been revealed to us. You have made known what you desire to do on today. And Holy Ghost, we know that you're going to go do what only you can do. You're the only one that can heal. You're the only one that can deliver. None of us are the healers. None of us are the deliverers. None of us are the saviors. We are the body of Christ, and we are decreasing that you might increase in us, that you might increase in our ambit of influence and go, and the many might be healed and delivered and set free. For where your presence is, Holy Ghost, there is liberty. Somebody needs liberty in their mind on today. Somebody needs liberty in their soul on today. There are many that are afflicted and affirmed even by demonic spirits. They need deliverance in their body on today. We are not the healers, but we know the healer. King Jesus in the fire power of your Holy Ghost, go now and heal and deliver just like you did in the days when you walked upon the earth. Lord, grant your servants healing power. 
grant your servants power to deliver by the laying out of hands. Even in this meeting right now, Lord, infuse us, empower us. Lord, when we go out on next week, let signs and miracles and wonders follow us. Lord, we are your servants. We are your body. Demonstrate your power mightily, even in this 90th day prayer challenge on tomorrow. Holy Ghost, we honor you. We bless you, sir, on today. You are the wonder of all wonders. You are the wonder of all ages. You are the power. You are the glory. Dominion and might is all yours, and there is no one that can take it out of your hands. Therefore, we worship you in the spirit of, we worship you in the beauty of holiness, and we worship you in the spirit of holiness. We thank you on today for your glorious power to heal and to deliver. Lord, let the testimonies keep flowing in to Apostle Annette in the years to come from this 90-day prayer challenge. Lord, she has obeyed you, and we've come on to assist her in obeying you. Lord, we know that you've done this to have your way and that you'll get all the glory. Help no one steal your glory that has come together in this unified um, uh, move and fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Lord, let you get all the glory and have the preeminence amongst your people and let it be always so. Father, we bless you, we honor you, and we love you because you first loved us. In King Jesus' name, we bless you, Father. Amen and amen. Apostle? Amen. Amen. Kingdom blessings to you all. Grace and peace, grace, mercy, and peace. We want to thank you all for tuning in to our 90 day prayer challenge for this is day 89. I cannot believe it. If you ever seen a miracle, you're looking at one. Amen. Truly despise not more things. Yes. I'm just grateful that we have, that we made it. I'm grateful that we were committed. I'm grateful that we didn't give up. We didn't come down off the wall. Truly, I'm blessing God for you, 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 and you, most of all for our revivalist, the man of the hour in the form of none other than our Bishop A. Guy Cox. I really salute you and I honor you on this afternoon. Truly, I want each and every last one to do me a favor. Click, share, like, and invite someone and we'll be back here tomorrow. The same time, the same channel. We're doing the same thing. We're lifting up the Savior. Amen. Let's get that word out. Let's get that word out because the Bible says one could chase a thousand, but two will put 10,000 to flight. So you can't do it by yourself. Amen. We need to be collaborated. We need to be unified. We need to be connected. Yes. Kingdom connected, divinely connected. So I want to thank you. I'm Apostle Moses and this is our Bishop Apostle a um, Guy A. Cox. And we want to see you back here on tomorrow for day 90 for the closeout. You, you don't want to miss what God has in store for us on tomorrow. And then we will give you our next assignment for our kingdom connection for um on tomorrow on the close thank you once again each and every last one of you apostle moses loves you bishop cox loves you i love you everybody now on to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of grace be mercy truth forever and ever amen go in grace go in peace live be safe Mwah. love you god bless you bishop appreciate you see you tomorrow yes ma'am